Ready to roll? Ready to roll? I have no questions for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to Words say No, uh, no, I do actually. Uh, Darren Bates posted something. Are you guys signing him to the practice squad or thinking you're not? Yeah, we're, we're adding him to the practice squad. Practice squad. Okay. Um, as far as Andrews, do you, have you made a decision there? Uh, getting close. We don't have to make it right now. Um, things are trending in the right direction for Josh, but again, a lot of things are fluid. Uh, we got to weigh everything as everybody gets back in here, and we practice, and then obviously going through tomorrow, see what the health of the team looks like going into the the game week. And you had said on Monday, if I remember correctly, that you felt like maybe you'd have more decisions on Gage and Davidson by midweek last week. Is there yeah. much more clarity there now? Yeah, I think we feel good about how they're progressing, but th we'll have to see how they look at practice, but they'll be out there practicing today. Okay, and Calvin Ridley, is he going to He's back? back. He's back? He's practicing today. Okay. Is he, is, that back? is he back fully now? He's back. Okay. What did you learn self scout was this week? Well, I think you just got to see where, you know, how we're trending offensively. Um, you know, you look at everything. It's a good time to reflect after five games, see how we've evolved, how teams are playing us. Uh, look at you know our personnel usage, really in all three phases where we have guys, uh, especially in special teams, our coverage units, and then defensively. You know how teams are attacking us, what we're calling, how we're using our personnel. So. It's a really good time to be objective. Uh, you don't have the pressure of getting ready for a game that week and game planning, so you really take a hard look at yourself. We thought it was very productive. And be that self I mean, is this, for you as a self scout different as a head coach versus when you were really just offensive coordinator? Well, yeah. See, we aren't just watching defense. Like, is there yeah. things that have changed for you and how you do sure. it? Sure, absolutely. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, you know, you got to look at it, you know, your mind first because you're so involved with the offense, but you got to be the head coach of the whole team. So there's things you look at it, you know, as a play caller offensively, but then it's the whole team. You're, and our staff does a good job. And we, I talk all the time with Dean and Marquise, and we look at things, but you do. You have to take it a whole objective of the entire team. Um, and a lot of it is just making sure we're looking at everything the right way. Uh, personnel uses what we're playing, you know, when you're making calls, yeah, you're responsible for everything. So it's a, that's what I signed up for, and I'm thankful I got this job. Wait, I, I want to go back to something you said on, I guess it was Monday, about, you know, with the bye week and now the rest of the game's heads, like these rookies are about to play a whole college season. Yeah. And I was just curious kind of what you really broke down with them during the bye week in terms of like, hey, <laughs> this is more than what you're used to. So, like, how did you just prepare them mentally for what's ahead? Yeah, a lot of it is. It's continuing education, making sure that they take care of themselves mentally and physically. Um, it's a long year. I always felt for these rookies, it's the longest year they'll have at their professional career because as soon as they their season ends, you jump right in. A lot of these guys jump into the All Star game, uh, so they they go they go maybe practice for the All Star game, and then they they all have places they go where their agents, uh, you know, have deals where they work out certain locations and they they prep for, you know, they didn't have the combine this year, but you prep for your pro days and. And then you're just constantly nitpicked as you go through the draft evaluation. And it's just, it's just different for them. It's a long uh, process. And then you get all the way up, up until the draft, and then you go to a new environment, and then it's kind of like drinking from a fire hydrant. And then you have a couple weeks before you start camp. And I mean, it's just a really long year for those guys. And you try to prepare them mentally, but a lot of things you have to experience for the first time. So we try to do a good job educating them, making sure they understand where they are in the season, how long the season is pick the brains of the veterans and then everybody we try to support them but yeah we got 12 games it is a full season left ahead with some of these guys I mean they did play well against uh, two weeks ago against mm -hmm. the Jets I mean how much do you kind of constantly think about like okay we saw these guys do well it's maybe time to ramp up some reps with them yeah it just depends it also you know who's up you know did a lot of these guys we feel have earned reps but there's you know there's some good good players that maybe have been out because of injuries or other issues and you know, they come back. It's a good problem to have uh, when you got to make tough decisions about who's up on game day or, you know, who's going to get the majority of the snaps or as you're planning and game plan. So there's a good problems. So we feel good about, again, a lot of these guys got a lot of snaps in the preseason, and we think that's paying off for us. Uh, and continue, hopefully these guys continue to produce on game day. That's ultimately what matters. Uh, I've, I've, I've covered uh, 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 eight um, before. He's a really yeah. good special teams player. Uh, yes. Was, was that part of the reason why? You Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. I've been with Darren. Um, I've known Darren a long time. Uh, another Memphis guy. Um, so we've been with him in Tennessee. My, 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 he went to high school with my brother. Um, excited Darren's here. See if he can he can help us. The offensive line has uh, evolved and gotten better over the Yeah, it's gotten better uh, week to week. And that's the, that's the whole challenge in this business. Can you improve week to week, both individually, obviously as a team? And we feel like it's trending in the right direction, but again, it's a long season. I mean, you just don't want to have these peaks and valleys. You want to constantly be building. And there's tough matchups every week. You know, Miami's going to present a number of, of challenges that are a little bit different than what we've seen. And we got to be ready to roll because I know they'll be ready. You guys have both seen, you know, um, each other earlier in the yeah. year. Do you think that has any pluses, minuses, given that you've already played them? I know, uh, you you know it's a, a little bit yeah, like a division opponent. Because uh, you play, you know, your division twice a year and you, you learn a lot. But it wasn't like we were going full out game planning. Uh, you get a feel for them. You, know, you have a little better feel for their personnel. Uh, but the teams, like I said, we're a completely different team than we were when we went down there. And so are they. So. That's why I kind of compare it to like, hey, you played somebody early in the year and you had a division opponent, you play them a little bit later, so. This is maybe very minute, but you guys haven't protected many practice squad players this year. Uh, I was just wondering the philosophy on choosing not to do that versus doing it. Well, I mean, there's a lot of different things and I won't go full fledged into our strategy, but uh, you know, it's a good mechanism if you want to use it, uh, you know, it's, it's not that you see a lot of people poaching off practice squads. So, um, like I said, if you need it, you got it. But, I, I, again, every team has a, you know opportunity to use how they see fit. And we've used it the way we've seen fit so far, and we feel pretty good about it. I know the last thing I asked you was like two, three weeks ago about like practice squad strategies and using kind of elongated tryouts. Do you think that all the new practice squad rules have kind of made it, like that whole mechanism, way more strategic than it was even five years yeah. ago for how you use different things in different ways. Absolutely, and I like it. I think it allows you some creativity, it allows you to, to invest a little more in player development, and then ultimately, like you said, if you, if you want to protect guys, and uh, again, it's protect them during the week, but and if you choose to go poach guys off other teams, you know, you got them on your active roster for, for a few weeks after that. So there's a lot of different mechanisms to claiming. I like the strategy of that. I think it allows you to be more creative, so it's not so cookie cutter. Do anything good with your bye week, or I tried to be productive, tried to be a, a good husband and, and dad. It was a beautiful weekend here in Atlanta, so it was good. I feel good, got some work done, and also get my most important job. I was able to be a dad and a husband for a couple of days. Long list of chores, <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> it was more, you know, pitching in with the, with the kids and doing my part there. What'd you do? I slept a lot, man. <laughs> What's that? I slept a lot. That's good. Hiked a bit, you know. That's good. That's a great weekend. Oh, I'll take it. Yeah, me like, too. I'll take, you know, 50 more of those. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else in here? I'm good. Good. Appreciate it. Thank all right, you. Good to see you all.